guys, Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music. You asked for it, and now I'm bringing you my top 10 guitar riffs of the 90s. And what an amazing decade it was for rock and roll and guitar in general. I love it. I love the 90s. I started playing guitar in 1993, actually, so it's even more special to me. So uh, anyway, thanks again for supporting Marty Music. Now let's get to that countdown. Number 10 is Loser by Beck. And I remember feeling kind of a sea change when this song came out. I remember I was a freshman in college and my roommate, Kurt, uh, had different tastes in music than me. Um, and he was definitely like super computer geek kind of guy. And this was probably 94. So I'm thinking, uh, you know, the internet wasn't really exploding uh, at that point yet. But I remember my roommate being really, really excited about this new guy, Beck, and this song, Loser. And honestly, at the time, I was really starting to get into playing guitar. And so for me, I, w I was like, well, I don't see what the big deal is, you know? Um, because I was like so into uh, like shredding on guitar at the time. So it didn't like move me the way I appreciate it now. The fact that he was one of the first independent kind of artist where he made the music on his own. And that was a really big change at the time because uh, before that it was all about getting discovered by an A&R guy, getting a record label to put money behind you, making your album, whereas Beck was a do it yourself guy, which now we know in 2020 that that is like the way we can do things. But at the time it was uh, definitely, I could feel a change happening. Plus he combined like there was a slide guitar riff, but then there's a hip hop beat. And so he's really uh, a child of all his influences up to that point. So for all those reasons, I think it's a really cool and important song, more important now than I felt it was then, but it's Loser by Beck and it rocks. When I Come Around by Green Day. And now I'm limiting one band per song on this list. So I had to pick what I thought was the most impactful Green Day song at that time. And this is a really classic uh, set of chords, power chords, chunking along. Green Day is another one of those bands that I wasn't super passionate about when they first came out because it was more of a punk rock inspired band at the time specifically i was really getting in to being a guitar student studying scales music theory uh listening to all the classic rock beatles led zeppelin uh, all the way up to newer bands for me at that time were like i was super getting into bands like fish and blues traveler and widespread panic and you know, bands that were doing lots of noodling and jamming, whereas Green Day had this simplicity to it that I thought I was, you know, I thought I was better than at that point. So this is another band for me where Green Day, where I've never appreciated what they do uh, more now than even back then, because I've really, especially teaching you guys so much, Green Day, I've gotten to study their music a lot more than I ever thought I would. And man, I've really grown to like them as a band. I like the boundaries they push. I like the tones they get. So I really dig them. And this is a perfect riff right now. <laughs> way yes now this is a perfect song for me that uses some pop sensibility and having an amazing video on MTV but still having that musicianship that I was really digging into at the time so this song really really made an impact on me especially because of the music video now in 2020 the music video doesn't give you that initial impact like 
it did back when I was in college, which is, I think, when this song came out. You know, basically, we're going to be dealing with a lot of Marty late high school college songs right now. Um, but Are You Gonna Go My Way is so awesome because it had this amazing sense of style in the video. He had the platform boots, the I think the red velvet, you know, red velvety suit and it was all hippie psychedelic looking, but you know, he had long dreadlocks and the cool sunglasses. I think he's playing a flying V, but ultimately it's about that riff. That riff is a monster. It made me uh, really fall in love with the whole album and I've been a fan ever since. And I actually even uh, have, you know, became friends with uh, Carl Denson who played saxophone for him in the 90s. So shout out to Carl and shout out to Lenny Kravitz and the amazing riff, Are You Gonna Go My Way? Very Hendrixy, but with a Les Paul. <laughs> Against the Machine, Killing in the Name, and what a powerful band this is. Uh, another turning point in music, combining kind of a hardcore rock sensibility with hip hop, with uh, political activism, all these amazing things mixed together, and then also just you know burning up the guitar scene at the time. Tom Morello with his super innovative approach, uh, making record scratch sounds, Laser sounds, you know, you can never go wrong with lasers. Just ask Dr. Evil. Just such an awesome band. And this riff is clearly one of the raddest riffs of the 90s of really all guitar, I think. Uh, but anyway, it's killing in the name. Let's rock it. <laughs> by Stone Temple Pilots. And when this song came out, I think I was in that camp of like, they, the singer is trying to copy Eddie Vedder too much. And so I think I, at the time, was a, a, a little bit more of a Eddie Vedder fan and Pearl Jam fan. So I remember when this came out, I, I felt like they were kind of ripping it off a little bit. But as time has gone on, and I've taught this song to many a student, and then made videos for it, and studied it for YouTube, uh, I realized that the guitar riff is awesome. And the song itself is awesome too. Uh, my wife, who's a huge Pearl Jam fan, it's probably her favorite band, Eddie Vedder's like her favorite, she won't appreciate this, but I don't think she's gonna make it this far in the video. So anyway, here's Stone Temple Pilots with Plush. <laughs> Thank you. 
Number five, Under the Bridge, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Now in late high school for me, Red Hot Chili Peppers were my favorite band. I hadn't started playing guitar yet, but they were my favorite band for like a two year period. I still love them, still have a you know very huge fondness connection with them. In that period of Blood Sugar Sex Magic coming out, I was obsessed. Now this was back in a time, I was still in high school when Blood Sugar Sex Magic came out. I remember back in the olden days, you, you'd know when a record was coming out. And I was already super into the Chili Peppers. I knew they had a new album, Blood Sugar Sex Magic coming out. I couldn't wait for the day for it to come out. And when it came out, I had to wait till after school and go to the record store. It was probably called Sam Goody. It was probably the record store I went into and bought the CD. But I just remember sitting in the driver's seat of my car parked in a parking lot and just like listening to that whole album front to back with the liner notes, you know, reading the lyrics, and it just never left my stereo for months and months. And I still talk when people ask me, what's the best concert you ever went to? I got to see their very first show opening the tour of Blood Sugar Sex Magic. It was at the Hollywood Sports Arena. Two other bands from this list were opening for the Chili Peppers on this tour, and uh, it was, a uh, band that was starting to get very popular called Nirvana. The opener's opener was a little band that was hoping to make it called Pearl Jam. So I'm a teenager, still in high school. Thank you, mom, for letting me go to that concert. It was probably even a weeknight. I really appreciate that, mom. Thank you. They lowered Flea from the top of the arena, hanging by his ankles at the very top of the arena in his tidy whitey underwear, doing a slap bass. It's probably the best entrance I've ever seen ever. So I picked Under the Bridge because it's the most significant song of theirs. It's not my favorite Chili Pepper song, but it is the most significant for them in the 90s uh, era. And so that's why I picked it. I had to. And it's Under the Bridge. And you all know how it goes. <laughs> by Pearl Jam. One of my all-time favorite bands of the 90s is Pearl Jam. Uh, once again, I was talking earlier about the greatest concert I ever went to was Pearl Jam, Nirvana, and the Chili Peppers in one show. No one had even heard of Pearl Jam yet. I can't even remember a time where I had never heard one song from a band and saw a band live not knowing any of their material and having them blow me away. His voice just cut through and it didn't sound like anything at the time. A lot of people ended up kind of copying his little melodies as well as that kind of baritone range that Eddie Vedder had. But it wasn't just that, it was the band. It was the, the two guitars together, that classic heavy, heavy rock sound. And the, they ended their, they probably played, played like a 35 minute set and they ended with Alive. And I you know, still remember it to this day. They played Alive and during the guitar solos, Eddie Vedder wasn't famous yet. He uh, jumped out off the stage into the audience and walked all the way to the sound booth uh, where they were, you know, doing the mixing. He was like thanking the crew for like having them, and everyone was cheering. Who's this new guy? He's awesome. And then I also remember that same Chili Pepper show when the Chili Peppers went on to headline that show. Eddie Vedder came out and sung backup. On a, on a little set, a handful of Chili Peppers tunes. And someone can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I do think that Eddie Vedder might have been in a Chili Peppers cover band at one point here where I live in North, uh, North County, San Diego. But anyway, Pearl Jam, I still love them. 
such a such a amazing band, group of amazing artists. Don't forget uh, Stone Gossard's amazing riffs. Let's break it down. <laughs> Metallica. Now, Metallica has actually made it on this list in the 80s, as well as now the 90s. It's just an epic song, and it shows the power that they have in their dynamics, which they'd continued to perfect, but they already had done it before. But you got the layering, you know, the riff starts. It's menacing. It's building. The toms start to come in. The riff starts building and building and building. And then finally... The whole thing explodes and the band's full throttle. I remember I was in high school when Enter Sandman came out. Some high school party I was at, the song was really new and it came on. And I remember the whole party was singing along to it. And I just have, that's like my personal memory of Enter Sandman. And then probably the next phase of my experience with Enter Sandman was in probably the early 2000s when I was mostly making my living teaching one-on-one -on -one guitar lessons. So this was one of those classics that I taught many, many times. Uh, so I thank Metallica for helping me uh, use their riffs to teach the youth of the early 2000s. Look where it got us. Great. Anyway, here it is, Enter Sandman. Let's rock it. <laughs> Thunderstruck. Thunder. ACDC, what can you say that hasn't been said already? But they made it on my top riffs of the 70s, top riffs of the 80s, and now top riffs of the 90s. They are all stars. I mean, you just can't deny the power of Malcolm and Angus, the whole thing. I mean, the whole thing. Now, my personal memory with Thunderstruck goes back once again to high school. And I think about where I grew up in Newport Beach, California, Corona Del Mar High School, the pep rallies, you know, the football team, you know, all the jocks, the locker room. I can hear Thunderstruck echoing out from uh, the boys' locker room, uh, all the football players and everyone else, you know, getting super jacked up listening to Thunderstruck, getting ready to take on the rivals, Newport Harbor High! Anyway, Thunderstruck doesn't get much better certainly gets worse. Here we go. <laughs>
You're probably not surprised, but I picked Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. I remember it very well. I was a junior in high school. Nirvana came out, changed the whole landscape of music. In fact, all the bands, all the hair metal bands, MTV was still super crucial. And even once again, MTV really did solidify Nirvana as like the new hot band. Uh, I go back to that concert that I saw where it was, uh, it was Chili Peppers as the headliner, Nirvana as the opener, and then Pearl Jam. And, you know, I'd say maybe a year later, Nirvana could have been considered bigger than the Chili Peppers. You know, they had a huge impact. And those, like I was saying, those hair metal bands, when Smells Like Teen Spirit video came out and, and uh, they were in like ratty clothes, they weren't in the big hair and the leather and the chains and the, you know, the hair, hair metal look, they all freaked out and they were like, we're in trouble. And basically the whole landscape of music changed into what they, you know, labeled grunge, but it was really more of an authentic approach to, to hard rock, um, kind of like stripped down the big hair, the leather and the, uh, the boots and the scarves everywhere. You know, here you have Kurt Cobain with the kind of matted down hair and a, and a vintage sweater from, you know, Salvation Army on and, you know, being all moody and brooding. But anyway, they had a huge impact and I still love Nirvana to this day. Uh, maybe appreciate them even more now because of how Kurt Cobain could write such catchy riffs with power chords. I don't know if anyone has written better just power chord movements around than Kurt Cobain. So here it is, y'all know it. Hopefully most of you love it. it. Smells like Teen Spirit at number one.